This is the Butterfly Fart Daddy song. She's saying the word fart. Hi, hi. Okay, well, explain explain what we did. Everybody said Daddy Fart. The, the noodle dish, the Korean yes, noodle dish. You, yeah. daddy, you fall. You need to fall, daddy. <laughs> yeah! Fall! Yeah! You, daddy, fall! Fall, <laughs> <laughs> daddy, fall! Butterfly, fall on daddy! The butterfly, yes. What beautiful people, it's Tuesday night, and that means it has got to be go time for the show that brings you the best of the worst of the internet ever since anyone was paying attention. Hello, beautiful people, I'm Brian Brushwood, live in Austin, Texas, joined by JRY and OAK. What's going on, Justin Robert Young? Hey, man, what's up? What's what's shaking? What's the uh, what's the haps, as it were? Uh, you know what, just uh, just getting ready for my two hour nap because stop me if you heard it before, I got a flight in the morning. But uh, but that's not an unfamiliar scenario to our guest hanging out with us live via Skype, Mr. Michael Television. What's up, Mike TV? Hey hey, how are you guys? Good man. So uh, uh, how how long of a of a jam session are you coming off of right now? Like uh, because you were playing music all day. Yeah, you know, well actually the Tuesdays Tuesdays are not the super long because uh, I I I was working although I just quit so I was working Thundercloud I was working two days a week at, at the sandwich shop here in Austin local sandwich place and I I just quit that gig so I'm I decided that uh, I can only work a, a menial slave job uh, for you know for x some x number okay. of months before true, I have true to go question back to is there some part of you some little part that. Uh, that, that just loves making sandwiches. And yeah, man. Place. You know, it's like it's like I, I really I was thinking about. It, I'm like, you know, the music's got to stop, man. I got the sandwiches are calling me. No, <laughs> no. Okay, I thought the reverse because uh, if there's one thing a talented musician needs is something to, is a vein of rage to tap into. I mean, the, I, I would think that. Like, I think part of me as an artist died when I quit my day job because now I just you know go around and and do shows now. Well, the good thing is, is that because I don't make any money, regardless of whether, uh, like, I th I'm filled with rage all the time. Yeah, so I don't have I don't have to worry about the rage thing. Like, I've got that covered. Come on. Yeah. Can... Uh, how about yeah, being in rock music as the entire genre died probably yeah, 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 yeah. That's, covers that's him a... like uh, for the rest of his days. <laughs> in fact, in fact, it's really funny. Like, almost to the day is when we got our record deal. It was like year year in and year out. They, they like the, the the industry was shrinking. It was like it's like are we signed a record deal? Yes. And then dink a dink a dink. And I'm like, oh okay, yeah. this is. Oh great! Oh oh, so uh, uh, four million dollars a night for someone to press play on an iPad. That's great. Yeah. That's great yeah. music. That's an amazing yeah. music industry. I'm very happy yeah. to be a part of it. That's exactly it. Yeah. Oh, I, I'm really thinking about my art. I'm thinking about you know. Dude, you're you're just pressing buttons, man. Oh, oh man, dude, I, I I I don't know. Part of me wants to tap into this and make Mike uh, like a poster boy for like anti DJ rage and like like yeah. like. You know what? Really, I mean, more power to them. I just—they're not musicians, but more power to them. No, they're not musicians. <laughs> I mean, I don't really know if they—I don't know. Uh, 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 Bryce, you probably be more plugged into to, to the the idea, the aesthetic of, of of the DJ. Do most DJs consider themselves like they're acts? They're not really like artists in the same way that like you know somebody who plays a, a musical instrument is, right? I mean, there's there's if we're talking about someone who is a producer and is 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 make is doing a live show and yeah. has live elements and that that's different than maybe someone who just spins records i, th yeah, I think there's and, a distinction i think it's it's no, i think i think than... we're, we're saying the people that have their face gigantic on the side of the mgm grand in vegas that you know, <laughs> <laughs> whoever whoever he may be or she uh, i mean you never know 
Oh no! They're, they're, it's half of all Vegas display advertising are DJs, and they're yeah. and they, I've, I haven't heard of any of them, and it makes me feel uh, as old as I've ever felt. But there has never been a genre that has dominated Vegas, including Cirque du Soleil, like the the celebrity DJ has. Well, okay, and the celebrity DJ, like they don't even pretend to have shtick, right? They don't get on stage and have like two or three ways to get the crowd pumped or whatever. It's like literally I'm that name and that face that you saw on that poster and now I'm clicking buttons and you're listening to music. But, but but that's there's there's more subtleties to that. And, and by by the way, this is me asking, and, and, not not griping. I promise. I, I'm try, I'm seeking to understand. Yeah. Okay. What okay. I'm trying to say is that DJs are talentless cunts. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> <laughs> no, and you know, it's funny because the thing is because I, I was joking, but because I, I do know uh, you know I used to promote raves before I was before I was an indie rock. I was a rave promoter, and so and I know DJs that would actually wait, actually wait, find. Wait, 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 Bup, yeah. Wait a minute, bup, wait a minute. Bup, bup. So you had a fork bup. in the road. I can go left and be a rock musician to follow my dreams, or I can go right and I can get into the surely dying fad of raves. Dude, no, I, no. I, I, hold on, uh, real quick, smash cut to, to Mike TV flicking, flicking uh, <laughs> tickets in his hands to people walking down the street. It's like, you want to, you want to get ecstasy? You want to get, you want to see glow sticks? That was, that was the real, re that was the real reason why I was like, I was like, I was just, I was in it for the girls and the drugs. I'm like, this is great. Yeah. Like, you know, like, and, <laughs> and, and which is basically, I think why any guy is actually, well, that's not so, but, but the DJs, the DJs were awesome. Like, I like, and they would, you know, and they would, they would find these albums and there'd be some little section of a song. Like the song would be terrible. It'd be like nine minutes long and just the same thing for like, for like nine minutes. And then there'd be like a little 20 minute pit or 20 second bit. And they're like, that's the part, man. And they'd, and they would, and he'd pull, he'd dial it in and get it dialed up and then bring it up and be like, yay. There, there is artistry to it. I definitely am willing to concede that. It's just not, they're just not making music, you know, like they're, they're taking music and they're manipulating okay, but, it and adapting but, it. And that's awesome. But, Okay, you know, and there are plenty. Like, there are plenty of acts that do incorporate live, live yeah. playing, live instruments, flight facilities. A, a an Australian disco uh, house band did an entire album with a full piece orchestra that they that okay. they arranged. All right, you want to know what? But here's my thing about that argument about the DJs. Like, sure, in the realm of magicians, there's David Copperfield and David Blaine. There are a few people that do it. By and large, you can just hit play and get money. Well, okay. yeah. So, so, so the, here's the thing. Here's the thing is the distinction, and I think Bryce has the right of it, between producers and DJs, right? Yes. So, um, but if you're a producer who's created uh, amazing uh, music that's resonated, like I saw Fatboy Slim and Crystal Method back in the late 90s or whatever, and as I'm watching... I, I'm thinking, like, I know they made the movie, the, the, the song. I know they sat there in front of the computer and click clock the deep job, but, uh, and, and, and it was delightful. But here now, I am an individual who's paid $45, and I'm definitely looking at what looks like a guy clicking one button yeah, and, well, and, that's, and, and that's, looking that's, like that's he's doing nowadays, busy work everywhere. So that's what I was say. So, so it used to be that they would sit there and they would actually do it by hand with a Technics, and they were listening and they'd catch the beat and they'd let it fly. And now by what the way, they do is they, they line they it up on the, the club, fucking program up, and they no, press play, the and there you go. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just, <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, and by the way, for the record, uh, and this is the the walk to the club uphill both ways moment sure. is uh, is uh, uh, freaking uh, Beastie Boys DJ uh, Mixmaster Mike. Like he was oh, the real sure. work, man. Yeah, they yeah, yeah. all like, DJ Scribble and Mixmaster Mike, and like those were guys that had uh, uh, that that definitely dated us to a very specific time and place. Because <laughs> I don't know if anybody knew about them before 1997 to 99. <laughs> Or afterward, but we sure know them now. <laughs> anyway, kids, uh, it's extreme. So uh, yeah, but they used to they like that was that was like uh, Olympic level athleticism of like trying to do things super fast and impressive, Amen. right? Yeah. Hey, but but like beat matching, beat matching has opened up you know uh, DJs and producers to do more things like playing instruments live themselves. Sure. Uh, like uh, 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 who is it? Griffin at at uh, the the Coachella thing that happened a couple a month or so ago. Yeah, yeah, we all he, know what you're talking about. He, he, well, God, he, yeah, Griffin, I love we, his. We early watched stuff. it right. Uh, Griff, Griffin, but, uh, I'm giving you. Isn't he? Isn't that, Griffin that, an actual? I Griffin? can't decide which I enjoy more: his eagle head or his lion's body. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh my god. I I can't believe he got fired from the Cavaliers front office. Just keep it going. Whoever got it got it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, by by being able to choreograph a live set a little more, he was able to switch and play different instruments live with his music. It's 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 opening up that live space and that live showmanship in in new ways and it's it's just it's not that one specific technically difficult thing of getting the right speed okay on so the how do yeah, you sure how do you resist the temptation to do what you know the crowd will like even though it's artistically dishonest and i'm not gonna claim that there's a juggler <laughs> what? okay all right hold on okay I, I hypothetically <laughs> let's imagine the year is 2003 and mm -hmm. on talent shows everywhere there's yeah. uh, some kind of juggler who has one of those uh, Tom Hanks big keyboards, and he he bing bongs the balls on the keyboard, and it goes yeah. bing bing bong bong bing bong what bong. What a lot of people got to remember is this came right after 9/11, so a lot of things were different. <laughs> yes. Anyway, Brian, I, I'm glad. On. Thank you for setting the stage, Justin, because yeah. I, yeah. I, we we all Just wanted right levity at this moment. Right after the towers fell, hashtag so never vulnerable. forget. Like, yeah. so and anyway, it's like all we really want to do is boo an act that's not quite as good as we expected, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, yeah. and so then he starts he starts throwing the balls down and juggling them, and and it plays a tune, and it's like oh my god, this is amazing. Talented. And then you find out behind the scenes, allegedly, that it doesn't matter what you hit. It's just hooked up to a MIDI spacer, and mm -hmm. and 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 there's no talent. He just programmed a MIDI thing, and yeah. he can juggle balls on there. Yeah. Like, so if you're a producer who also juggles, you've been called out. <laughs> <laughs> Looking but, at you, DJ juggles. But a lot. like, like my here's my point: is if you're a producer, uh, or, or maybe if you're not a producer, if you're a DJ or whatever, like <laughs> if I'm up there, I would think of like, what are all the things I could do that'll make it look like I'm doing something. <laughs> like, I'm going to hit play, and I'm going to have, like, 35 different gizmos. I'm going to run over. I'm going to turn a hand crank. <laughs> I'm going to I'm gonna fold a paper plane and throw it out in the audience. Bike. I'm going <laughs> to the TARDIS. Like, there's just all these different levers and cranks yes. and knobs and, like, <laughs> That's exactly what it is. Yeah. Like, is 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 all of that fake? I just imagine all of that is fake because that's the sip. That, that's Occam's razor. Is I mean, why bother to do anything? It it really depends, right? Like, Mike, it it just it depends on the act. There are definitely <laughs> yeah. acts that are that are. Hey, the youngest person on the show, answer for your generation. <laughs> <laughs> Spinners. <laughs> well, and, oh. and uh, it's it's such a pervasive <laughs> thought of uh, of that that stereotype where you see incredibly talented musicians try to actively buck against that uh, in in terms of incorporating live instruments, incorporating live singing, uh, uh, incorporating uh, uh, showmanship in visuals. If you look at um, like the uh, uh, Porter Robinson and Madison did a really amazing collaboration tour with this huge synced video visual element. And so as they're mashing up their own songs against each other's songs live, playing drums and instruments and singing live, you've also got these these great original. Oh, that's interesting. So playing. so like to some extent, you have to prove that so so you have every, to entertain the people. What, and if people just want to hear the music, then you can give them that on a big PA system or you can, you can right. Well, well, much like with a magic trick, you have to show that your hand's empty before you put the quarter in it. Uh, you have to, if you want to convince people they're seeing magic and talent right there in front of them, you have to convince them that you're not all just lip syncing and somebody didn't just press play like at the Super Bowl or whatever. Yeah, I mean, there. Yeah, and also the other thing is that you don't go see a DJ in in a a seated theater. Right. Like you don't go like get your tickets and like, oh, I got front row seats for this DJ. No, they're at a club where people are also incidentally trying to drink and fuck each other. So it really doesn't like you don't have to. You're, you're not you're not up there doing a full dance production. Right. This isn't Broadway. People are distracted. There's a lot going on. There's a lot of light. So you don't have to do something all the time. You can uh, you know, take a smoke break, you know, walk back and uh, hit the next track. Here's you Pina Colada. You could pose the same question to pop singers, right? Because it's it's very well known that pop singers will record a live version of them singing their songs right. and then play that track right. 
uh, over the over the backing track to sound live to sound different than the well, recording. and and that's that's the weird thing. Like, where's the line? Because we get offended and and uh, you know outraged by the Milli Vanilli. I mean, Milli Vanilli. There's a relevant example. Oh boy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, the, Look at two live free. Thirty years ago. <laughs> um, but no, no. But my 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 point is like clearly there's some kind of sweet spot that we want to believe people are capable of, and when we find out that they don't, like I heard, um, uh, and this is all hearsay. Don't don't sue me. Okay. Uh, but uh, but I heard that like you know uh, you know Kenny Rogers is still uh, touring and he can't quite hit some of those high notes, and so they've got a live looks like, looks DSP like someone system. Someone doesn't know how, where how when to fold them. Yeah, <laughs> uh, no, I mean he, he's running all the way to the bank. Uh, but but like when when he hits some of those higher notes and he's not quite there, the DSP recognizes it, fades down his mic, brings up the backing trap trap uh, track and track, and yeah. so on. Um, like I I don't know that there's anything wrong with that, but yet and um there and that might is a, have that is there distinctly might better show. Versus hearing him screw up those bad notes, probably, right? Uh, well, okay, and likewise, uh, I might have uh, at one point toured with a country music duo who shall remain nameless. Sure, sure. One of which is known better as the musician, the other known as the entertainer. Salt and, and the entertainer was having a really good time and enjoyed bringing the energy. They like to push it really good. <laughs> and, and maybe, <laughs> just maybe, I talked to the sound people who were like, yeah, we kind well, of. Well, that was after they talked about sex. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Uh, they, the sound people maybe said, uh, yeah, you'll notice, uh, he's playing rhythm guitar. Uh, his, his, it's turned all the way down. Look behind him and you'll see the identical chords. Only they're all being played <laughs> like, uh, because it was like, uh, one of them would join in for a little bit and then stop. But the, but the chords would still keep coming. Um, keep going. uh, well, yeah, the, like, there was the whole, uh, uh, red hot chili peppers at the Super Bowl where you just like all their instruments were unplugged. Like they didn't even bother to plug them in. It's just flea doing his like normal flea stuff, but it's a Super Bowl. Like they're not going to like, there's a million screaming teens on the field running around and everything. They got to get them on in five seconds and off in five seconds. They're going to be like, oops, uh, a, a random crew person forgot to plug in the XLR. Like whatever, just let flea go out there, do the thing. We'll all pretend like he's playing. Yeah. And I guess I, I don't know. It's it's a weird line because like it's not like um, you know I, I go and I'm like that guy wasn't even really Hamlet. That wasn't a real skull. <laughs> His father didn't even get murdered. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> These teens aren't dead. That's they bullshit. Even <laughs> you know. I mean, clearly yeah, just, we've got I, these weird arbitrary rules. Is all I'm saying. This isn't yeah, I, Italy. I, this is Texas. <laughs> fuck you, Romeo and Juliet. <laughs> You're not 14. You're not really fucking boo. Really fuck. Really fuck. <laughs> that light was barely soft. See, on this Dr. is this Winto. is exactly fuck the Romeo and Juliet that I've been wanting to see for years. Um, <laughs> Can you imagine? Hold on. Somebody should go and protest Romeo and Juliet with two sides. I don't says, think Shakespeare plays getting <laughs> protested right now is a real good time to. <laughs> but it's like a, one side that says. Get the hot market. People are going to have. We're having to push him off that corner. <laughs> I want 14 year olds actually fucking on stage. <laughs> Be true to the arts. <laughs> Fuck you. Yeah. yeah. Shakespeare's rolling in his grave right now. <laughs> uh. uh Hey, you want to talk? Uh, you want something more topical? How about sure. uh, what's what's the shakeup on this Han Solo movie? Well, uh, it appears that uh, Lord and Miller, the directing duo who brought you the Lego movie and both Twenty One and Twenty Two Jump Street, and were writing and directing the Han Solo spinoff movie, have left the project after oh, they really? completed principal photography. They are now out. So mid-production, that's a that's a good sign, right? That usually means it'll I be a great it's, movie. Uh, safe to say probably more than midway. Uh, now they have what, what looks to be extensive reshoots set up, uh, and they're going to bring in a new director. But uh, this is definitely not what you do if everybody is in love with the, with the movie that happened. Well, and I don't know. Uh, yeah. That I mean, Kath... Kathleen Kennedy, you know, I mean, she's 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 responsible. She's been had a big hand in a whole ton of amazing movies. Like, like if, I, I'm fairly certain if she doesn't like it, you, you're probably she's probably got some decent notes. You know, like if you're not gonna, but mm -hmm. I don't know. That's just me. 
I mean, listen, I'm I'm with you. I, I was uh, a big fan of Kathleen Kennedy Run and uh, Lucasfilm. Uh, I, I think we've we've definitely made our feelings known on uh, that one Rogue movie. But uh, yeah, yeah, other, yeah, yeah, other yeah. than yeah. that, uh, I've I've liked I've liked the main ones. Uh, uh, we we will see. I do not find this to be encouraging news. However, uh, I, yeah. I I thought Lord and Miller were were really inspired picks for that kind of movie it, it signified that it could bring a fun comedic maybe dare i say lighter tone to a younger tale of a scoundrel and yeah, uh yeah. i i just hope that it retains some element of that but who knows uh wait so so you're saying uh, like uh, i feel like you're speaking uh, in a politic manner but but if i'm hearing you between the lines you're saying god damn it why don't you make it fun and funny and character driven and delightful? Like, uh, like Ant Man was not the same as all the other our Marvel movies, and that was okay. It was just a straight up comedy heist movie, and that was fun. What if it was more uh, like Twenty One Jump Street? Or I mean, I don't know. It seems like if only you could get the guys behind that. Or what mean, about the Lego Movie? Yeah. Although, although, to be fair, Ant Man is probably the thing that you are pointing to when you say this is not going to be that big of a deal. Because Ant Man also lost its uh, uh, marquee, everybody loves him director and Edgar Wright. That's true. Uh, that's true. That was also before the film started shooting. Yeah. As opposed to after they had almost completed principal photography. Yeah, but how did Spider Man get his powers again? That's like another <laughs> good question being asked. Uh, uh, the funny thing is that you'll only find out the answer to that question in Girls Trip uh, coming out in the next few weeks. It's weird that there's a <laughs> Spider-Man tie-in in that movie, but Girls Trip is definitely the place where you find out where and when Spider-Man Oh, that's, got that's part of the MCU as well, huh? I had no it idea. Is. They're tying it in. Well, yeah. and they, fi they finally wrap it up with, uh, I don't know if you noticed, there's several threads set up in Citizen Kane that finally pay off in Girls Trip. Yeah. Everybody's talking yeah. about you know, Girls Trip. And I, I hear that actually they have some super booty holes uh, in those movies, so that's... Uh, I That's mean, hey, funny. listen, you can't get a uh, an infection in him, so, like, why not make Look. him as big as possible? <laughs> as big yeah. as possible. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, the, uh, yeah, uh, whatever. Uh, Han Solo, we'll see. I'm sure uh, that has happened so late in the game that there's no doubt that the, 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 the story and the stories behind that will be out probably promptly. Uh, in fact, by the time that you are listening to this, for podcast listeners, uh, the, there's probably more information about this, in, including what hill either party died on to make a, a change this drastic this late in the process uh, uh but here's what i want to know yeah you guys uh i think we both saw uh, a certain act this week oh and oh, uh oh, you guys oh. had, had a hell of a time i mean i had a hell of a time too but it was just seeing the show you guys are uh you, you were like hey look i got some stories to tell yeah for, well first off gotta give Huge, huge thanks to Waffle Office for hooking us up with the tickets and, uh, and for last minute uh, making it happen. Uh, 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 funny story. I'm going to I'm going to out some of our uh, Diamond Club elite here. <clears throat> but uh, the uh, Waffle Office ended up buying a whole bunch of seats in the front row. And if you have not seen the Auntie Donna show, they got a regular bit. They they is it always whoever's front row and center, Justin? Uh, I've seen the show twice, and I know where uh, Waffle Avagus was sitting uh, based on pictures, so I would say it's safe to assume that it is it is front row center. Uh, so that seat that Waffle Avagus was supposed to be in, or, or that was, was sitting in, and, and we have photos here, uh, they do this bit where they single out just one guy in the front <laughs> row, and they continuously double, triple, quadruple down on making the energy super awkward for that one person. It is astonishing how they go from the height of, of the ecstasy of energy and then suddenly just shame of the person, uh, like like disappointment for whatever they do. The person who was supposed to sit there was Travis Tubbs. And last second, they swapped. And of course, uh, Waffle Office is rolling, you know, with whatever. And he's got just this insane, you know, hells yeah, let's go for it energy. Uh, I, I would <laughs> dearly love to know what that alternate universe would look like in which uh, Travis Tubbs, I think he would have been game and he would have been cooperative. Yeah. But, but it would have been fascinating to see that alternate reality. Uh, yeah, no, so, uh, uh, I guess 
they're the the in, in the Venn diagram of Auntie Donna fans in America and uh, uh, fans of this program. We have a very uh, a, a very big uh, gray area in the middle because we are. Uh, I, I was hearing from from the boys afterward that every single show, people came up to them and had them do the Diamond Club symbol and awesome. Had the best seats at both shows. All of our people were dead center in rows one through three to the point where all the audience interaction bits in both the shows that me and you saw were all uh, our people. But the Larry in our show was uh, Leon, who uh, uh, was is is our archivist and and you know used to uh, to do all the the recaps and everything. Yeah, the uh, uh, so okay, so when it came up afterwards, for, so I'm guessing I don't know why, but they were doing everything by grabbing people from the front row, and they've got the, they got the one bit. Uh, what's what's the name of the of the of the Whoopi Cushion character? Lord, Lord Whoopi. Lord Whoopi. Wow, you would think I would. Uh, <laughs> it's like, kind of it's like they laid it out for me. I don't know. I don't understand. You had the blueprints, but you didn't see the shape of the building. <laughs> And so uh, it's so it's so like Broden definitely. And it's like, you you know, in that brief flash, you could tell like there's genuine recognition, like yeah. like Broden Broden definitely picked me to get up for the Lord Whoopi bit. And it's like I've done, I, I you know, being a magician who has a stage show where all I do is pull volunteers up out of the audience. Yeah. Like I'm thinking like just be a supportive, good guy. Don't make this about you. Don't try to showboat. Just try to go along. Yeah. And uh, and Zach's asking me these questions as Lord Whoopi, and uh, uh, <laughs> and he asks what I do for a living, and uh, and and I I I, I had that flash because it's like, uh, well, I run a website and also I host a YouTube channel, <laughs> and so and so I was just like a podcaster, and then it, it, I don't know, it was a really good moment as he's like. Uh, Two questions. Uh, will you ever let us on your podcast again? And and then set up the next bit. But uh, the Great. afterwards. Uh, yeah, so at that point, I knew that they knew, you know, knew us. Um, but afterwards, I went up, and uh, the first thing I think it was Broden. No, it was Zach. I think it was the first thing Zach said was he goes, "Well, you didn't shave your beard," and I was like, "What?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, anyway. no, they were very uh, surprised. I guess I, I, I've, I've kind of uh, come to understand that everybody in my in my podcast and daily life have gotten used to the mustache that I shaved in to promote Action News uh, hitting Kickstarter June thirtieth. But uh, <laughs> those guys have not. They haven't been on the show since then. Uh, and so when I came up, I, I snuck into a Diamond Club photo, and they were initially like, what the fuck are you doing? And then they realized, and they were very surprised that oh, I good. had shaved my beard. Uh, dude, and, and they had, uh, I don't know, like, I'm so excited for them. Uh, their, their tour schedule just seems like it's insanely busy, and uh, um, they had that that delightful, exasperated energy, uh, Mike TV, I'm sure you recognize it as well, that comes with somebody just at the top of their game on tour doing – yeah, doing a million shows, you know, with a thousand yard stare. Yeah, it's, it's funny because the thing is, like, it not only was not only were they on point, but the whole like whoever was handling all of the little like the little uh, sound cues and all of the like, like it was it was just it moved like magic. It was just oh, that's right. Uh, uh, you had no idea what you were in for. You you yeah, just yeah. got swept up. Yeah, yeah. So the thing is, like, so it was like, it was like, like the girl, like you know, they're they're interviewing the individ individual people, and they talk to the girl, and they're like, they're looking for Satan, you know, and they talk to the girl, and she, and they change, and they just uh, change, like, like there was uh, there was a whole bunch of like perfectly timed, beautiful bits where I'm like, that's just crazy awesome. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. It it it, it was it was it was uh, um, a a magic moment, you know, like like it, there were uh. Yeah, I, you know, Would you there say they're as good as a DJ <laughs> turning cranks and pulling levers live before four thousand well, that, people I mean, making a million dollars? Just hit the button at the right time. <laughs> that was the thing that that that, that, was, that was the one thing that really got me maybe the most angry though watching them was I'm like these guys are not fucking musicians, you know? God damn it, no, no, actually they were. <laughs> I, it, <laughs> It was the, the 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 timing was awesome. Oh, and and, and the 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 um some of the improv bits. What was it that they're? Oh yeah, when the the uh, 
the walking, the loose rope walker. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, was it a brand new bit? I don't know, but it, it was like. They committed. They, that was definitely four full minutes of yeah. just four watching. Minutes of him climbing over chairs. Uh, so uh, here's the deal. If you are in uh, the UK or Australia, there are plenty of opportunities for you to see them uh, from uh, gossiping with the boys. After the show, it sounds like it might not be that long before they come back to America either. So uh looks like uh, if, if you missed it this time, don't worry. You'll have another opportunity. And I think that they're at VidCon this weekend. So if you are going to VidCon, then then make sure you go see uh, see the Auntie Donna boys and listen to their podcast. But oh, they damn, were uh, they were amazing. By the way, uh, my favorite thing was, you know, Bonnie had only seen maybe two or three sketches. Um, she was totally unprepared for the energy that they brought on yeah. that show. Just the nonstop in your face, pushing social boundaries, all that stuff. It was it was awesome. It was awesome. Uh, yeah, it's it, it just unlike anything uh, that I've that you've seen in sketch. And I've seen a lot of sketch comedy and live sketch comedy. And it is even the best, like the really, 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 really great sketch comedy has pauses and uh, yeah. uh when yeah. when uh mike mentioned audio cues i was talking to tom their audio guy afterward and he's like i'm like you know that's the thing is that even like the best have weird audio cues like there's no rhyme or reason to the to the pauses between each sketches and sometimes things start on time and sometimes they don't but that's not the point and you just kind of deal with it their stuff is precise it is on time there well, is, and, there and, is no, yeah not and, a wasted second and on that level, it's funny because it, it did, to a certain degree, it felt a little bit like um, like a Broadway production, like except for the fact that there was all sorts of like improvisation. It was just it was it was mind blowing. Like like it, the music was amazing. Them their performances, like they even just were singing in key. I'm like I fucking hate these guys, well, but. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, it was awesome. It was it was majestic. Uh, was cool. Yeah, well, and, and f like I'll tell you this much: like uh, maybe it's a side effect of me now being over forty. Like what? <laughs> like how physically taxing what they're oh. doing must be. The, yeah. the energy and the dancing and all that stuff nonstop. It was just insane. Yeah, yeah, uh, that, that's that's. That yeah, that's I, I that's you know it's funny that's that difference between like sitting down and playing guitar and, and standing up and playing guitar for multiple hours like like it, it is night and day like like the end of a three hour show like I'm like I am done I can I I'm I'll be done I'll, I'll see see me see you next week you know so that's cr that's pretty crazy like that's you know like the fact that they can they can do that day in and day out uh, uh well if you want to support them you can you can get lost but if you want to support us then you got to head on <laughs> over. To patreon.com slash oh, night attack. Yeah. That's what that's what you're gonna do. Yeah, that's it. Head on over there right now. Patreon.com slash night attack. It's where you go ahead and kick us a few shekels and uh and we help uh give you the the good old night attack experience that you've come to expect every Tuesday night. You get early access to the after show. Uh, and the pre-show, as well as so much more, including this part of the show. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the Night Attack new Patreon name chant corner hour. It's an hour of... <laughs> Good save, good save. I, I I don't know why it tickles me so much that it's an hour of it becomes has become a meme because we were like I was just talking about uh, uh Auntie Donna and we're like yeah it's just over an hour long they're like it's an hour of it. Uh hey man, I don't know this person's last name, but I can I know that this person only a scant three hours ago raised his pledge forty three cents. And wow, really? What's what's what, what's what, what's their name? What do you what do you think they're doing? I think this person is working in a Korean animation factory. I think <laughs> he is twelve. Oh, I think forty three cents is two days' wages. Oh God. I <laughs> think. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and take fifty nine minutes off real quick. Uh, <laughs> I think I think this person, uh, 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 Night Attack brings this person great joy, and I, for one, want to thank 
Paul. That's it. It's just Paul? <laughs> it's just, that's all the name. It just says Paul. Just Paul? Yeah, yeah just, just Paul. Paul. <laughs> Kylo Ren! <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like you're saying all. Paul. Oh, okay, there we go. <laughs> Just Paul. Uh, some people say that a better job. Some people he says he has no sense of right or wrong, but I say he is a just Paul. Just, just Paul. No, 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 no. That's it. Just a traditional Korean man. Um, Justin, uh, uh, you've been messing around with that uh, that Kylo Ren voice. Did you see that that Kylo Ren ASMR video? No. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Justin, are you in a well? Where are you? Uh, I'm in a digital well. Uh, I love that at some point Skype thinks it's messed up and cleans all of that up. You know what I love is that this motherfucker just spent 30 minutes shitting on DJs who just press <laughs> buttons. <laughs> Total hypocrite. <laughs> anyway, do you have any questions for me in the digital web? Yes, yes. Is it true? Is it true that uh, that that BitTorrent is 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 dead? <laughs> kind of close to home. <laughs> kind of close to home. Oh, sorry. <laughs> took took me a second. <laughs> Thanks for remembering. God damn it. <laughs> Digital Justin, DJ Hypocrite, will you play? Will you play for us one of your best jams? Sure. This is one I like to call. She loves you. Oh, how's it go? Well, this is where I would normally just play "She Loves You" by the Beatles. Mike, do you have any questions for for Digital Justin? Uh, wait, wait, wait. I, I, isn't, isn't this DJ uh, uh, DJ, Hypocr oh, DJ Hypocrite? Oh, DJ Hypocrite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, uh, so yeah, DJ Hypocrite. Um, so where are you playing next, man? Are you, I, I, I hear. Are you doing that? Are you doing the, the whole like like festival circuit now? I'm assuming, yeah. Uh, I'll be at Circus Circus on Saturday in the Peanut Lounge. And then uh, I, I play the My Eyes Won't Close Festival in Des Moines. It just clicks yes. off. So Circus Circus, I hear that's a, that's, that's a pretty uh, choice, choice of booking. <laughs> Wait, that's oh my god, it was Kylo Ren the whole time. See you later, guys. <laughs> I still don't think he's figured out his exit line. <laughs> no, anyway, that's bye. a different guy. Uh, that that's DJ Hypocrite who says anyway, see anyway, bye or whatever. <laughs> uh, um. Anyway, look up Kylo Ren ASMR. It's funny. Um, maybe we'll play, <laughs> we'll play it in the after show or something. Uh, Justin, I, 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 uh, I'm fired up. I'm fired up. I got legal beef. Oh, why? I mean, uh, that, is it, legal it, beef it, delicious? Is, yeah. Is there, is there been any, uh, big legal decisions handed down in Canada lately? Uh, <laughs> Canada. I don't live in Canada. I'm in Texas. Uh, sure. Yeah. I mean, I, that's why, uh, what I'm saying. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, just whatever the Canadians want to do, they deserve to be able to do it. They have their own sovereignty. Mm, no, I'm they talking about it, a, an issue that faces a, a U.S. American, unless it doesn't. Are they Canadian? Are, 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 
trying to guide you, Brian. Oh, okay. <laughs> Uh, 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 yeah, I believe uh, Canadians are Americans too, and they deserve to be protected under American Canadian law. I'm just saying they deserve to make whatever laws they want, and including the rulings on trademark infringements. Yeah, man, I'm I'm actually too fired up on this. You want to set this story up? Do you know about this, Mike? No, no. What are we talking about? All right, Captain Morgan's an asshole. There, there, I said it. I said it. I said it. Let's go ahead and uh, uh, take take a look here. The I think the story we're going to read from is from the New York Post, right? Uh, Captain Morgan wins trademark lawsuit against Admiral Nelson, uh, rightly. Uh, well, uh, hold on. No editorializing, or at least um, uh, you have to editorialize as DJ it- Hypocrite. <laughs> Is this a is this like a is a sexual harassment kind of case? Is that what this is? Admiral Nelson was touching Captain Morgan. Uh, no, well, I'll tell. Call Canada. Call Canada. I'll tell you what this is. <laughs> it's a goddamn miscarriage of justice. <laughs> It's hey, hey, oh my God, Admiral Nelson. That's well. Wow. You're goddamn right. It is. What you think? Did what? You, you gotta take on Doctor Thunder next, Mister Pib. Fuck you. Nautical Rums is a general venue. You gotta take on Lady Bly. Fuck you. We'll form the League of 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 Naval Rums, and we'll shove. You. We'll give you a rum enema you'll never forget. This is a uh, hold on. Uh, Admiral, you seem real fired up. Normally, your character is very refined and calm in uh, in, in uh, contrast. Hey, with the fuck Chris you. Ad- the Target. capital of Missouri is Springfield. I didn't even have to be asked that one. I got nothing to lose. This eye patch is bullshit. I don't have an eye underneath it. So let's... Uh, let, let's go ahead and read from this story real quick. Rum peddling pirate Captain Morgan is forcing a rival to walk the plank, successfully winning a lawsuit against a suspiciously similar buccaneer branded booze called Admiral Nelson for trademark infringement. Canada's federal court ruled June 12th that consumers could easily confuse the six year old upstart for the iconic spiced rum brand. And Admiral Nelson is now banned from selling bottles featuring the copycat Corsair on the country's shelves, uh, according to the Globe and Mail. Admiral and Nelson, really. We were really shame. sailing high there for a bit, weren't we, boys? <laughs> uh, well, uh, hold on. Admiral Nelson, the first thing that really struck me about this story was the fact that, uh, that, that it says that you've only been around for six years i remember admiral nelson being around for longer than that what do you have to say to the new york post uh i don't know (laughs) uh i'll tell you what i'm pretty sure that i wasn't a goddamn pirate like like captain morgan boy i tell you if i could see that mother face to face i'd give him a, a, a a capital or two well, why don't you do it, fuck <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> Hey, hey, it's my little, my little uh, puppet buddies. God yeah, damn, you don't, you don't think I'll give up this, this uh, uh, sweet, sweet revenge, huh? You, you think, oh, you have a state capital contest and everybody thinks you're just a cat's ass. No. Well, guess what? Captain Morgan took his beef up north, and it might be frozen, but it still got your goat, didn't it, you copycat piece of shit? I'm Captain Morgan. Oh, Captain, listen. It's adorable that you bought a boat and you think that that makes you a proper captain, but I went through naval medical school, and I'm a goddamn admiral, and it's about time you recognized my authority over you. Well, oh, 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 I'm sorry. Hold on. Wait a minute. Uh, oh, you, you know what, Admiral? You're right. I, I'm going to report to the closest liquor store in Toronto, Ontario, Canada, and I'll await your orders there. Although, you, you know, gentlemen, I really do think that, that in order, for, obviously, you've won a battle. Captain Morgan, you won a battle in the courts. Yes, certainly. But we, we both know that that's not where sea see, see, seamen win, win their battles, right? They win their battles through sea shanties. And so I think that uh, you guys should uh, definitely take it to the, uh, you know. You're darn right. That's, that's more naval law. 
we should do a sea shanty about which capitals we know. But unfortunately, there's <laughs> no music. Well, wait, hold on. You you got to get some lube to squeeze on into this challenge, Admiral Nelson. Real captains do it dry. Dry as the Sahara Desert. If you won't go a cappella, I'll take that as you forfeiting this sea shanty <laughs> off. No right. This sea shanty begins now. Oh, Carson City is the best place in Nevada. It's not full of sin like that place with DJs. Wait, no, all these are going to be about state capitals? <laughs> yes, that's what the, that's literally the rules we just set up. All Jesus. right, just, hey, sorry, I've been doing... Uh, drinking for a long time i'm Captain morgan fuck you here's the deal all right here we go i know a place where assholes live it's austin yes austin i know a place where shitholes live it's austin yes austin if you're a piece of fucking shit move to austin yeah that's it austin Austin, <laughs> if you fuck ass, then Austin is the place. I, 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 I didn't mean fuck ass like gay. If you're gay, fine. Be wherever. <laughs> we go to Mike TV for the verdict of the first round. <laughs> All right. First round, point two. I, wait, 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 wait. Let me, let me figure out. Uh, all right. <laughs> point two. Oh. There we go. Ken hey. Morgan. Ken <laughs> Morgan. No, oh, I'm sure there was some skullduggery on that one. <laughs> Take it away, Captain Morgan. You have honors. <laughs> oh, Sacramento sounds like somebody has balls and their name is Mento. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody just says in the in the chat is Jerry Captain Morgan. No, this piece of shit just stands behind me and and, and tries to repeat all my words. He's not very good at it. The lip sync on him is not totally right. Lip sync's garbage. Fuck him. I'm Captain Morgan. I sail the high seas. I fucked your mom, and I'm about to bury this cunt. Not only in Toronto, Ontario court, but also in this shanty off. What do you got? Fuck. Fuck. Fuck, fuck. No! Montpelier is where my mom lives. She lived on royalties from my humble spice drum business. As I sailed on the seas, my mother works at the church. She feeds all the poor. She uses the money we used to make and then made good more. She was a noble investor. She was the town's mayor. And then all of that ended because of a selfish man's flair. All right, we now go back to Mike TV to rule on round two. <laughs> uh, that's, uh, that, that's a tough one. That's a tough one. But, uh, you know, I... I, I My I, I'm, mom I'm gonna... also has cancer. Hey, hey, Living <laughs> alone in Montpelier. Uh, uh, you had 16. You had 16. Uh, that's uh, why bullshit. we started selling uh, in Canada. Because Mom. cancer drugs are cheaper there. But then one day, a real ass hat hey. who thinks he was a captain <laughs> decided to won. sue us out of existence and into oblivion. He uh. is really... its He's an asshole. <laughs> order, order, order. You had 16 already. <laughs> Mike TV, how do you rule in this round? All right, just check my watch to see how long this fuck fuck is gonna keep talking. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give oh, this one. Oh, it was a greedy Korean court that international claims would vary from province to province, and that 
he should have the blame. Well, just make the call. Make the call. <laughs> he wins the round. It's Captain Morgan again. It's Captain, Captain Morgan. Morgan in round two. Oh, oh my goodness. Doggone it. Now, people don't know this, but actually, courts have a third triple points round. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, that's, is... another, that's a well-known nautical court uh, quirk. <laughs> that's right. The court quirk. <laughs> uh, <laughs> how does it work, Mike TV? Well, that would that would mean that since it's your Shut turn, up! I'm You're not Mike that TV! You sing another song. <laughs> well, I believe because, because Captain Morgan is in the lead, he does have to continue to defend his title. Well, but you actually have to... I now. And yeah, but you have to do this. The, the the final round, you have to do it to the to the tune of the Jeffersons. You know, the moving on up song. Moving on up to the top. Nope. All right, here we go. Are you ready? Here yep, we go. Yep. Uh, more. Well, it's Harrisburg, Harrisburg. It's what I call your mom's puss, your mom's puss, because it's really hairy and weird. Oh, Harrisburg, Harrisburg. It's a weird town, and it's also what I call your mom's private job. <laughs> It's like I'm really there <laughs> on the east side. Is that <clears throat> one, Nelson? <laughs> Let me tell you of Tallahassee. He's a noble man with a big assy. But then he was struck down by Canadian courts and found himself a magician hours before a gig wearing a sock on his head and pretending to be a disgraced mascot for spiced rum. He kept on going because he had lots of heart that's the story of tallahassee now all part <laughs> all right now we go back live to to the mike tv's court to rule on round three. let me remind you my mom has cancer and she lives in montpelier <laughs> please we're trying to throw the <laughs> <laughs> is that your version of banging the gavel? <laughs> is that yeah, I think I think uh, I think I think Admiral Nelson. I'm sorry, man, but I think you're gonna have to you're gonna have to hang up your. Uh, Did I mention I'm an scoops. assassin in my spare time, and I know your home address? Oh my God! That's, that's <laughs> you not even a veiled threat. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Enough of this. Captain Morgan is declaring himself the winner based on Mike TV's judgment. You can get fucked, Nelson, once and for all. I'm changing you off all these corners. First Canada, then America, then all ships at sea. Guess what? Here's Captain Morgan's uh, message to Admiral Nelson. Mahoy, fuck, fuck. <laughs> oh my god, he's gone digital. <laughs> Admiral Nelson, he, he stormed off in disgrace. How how unbecoming of I, I Actually, he, he whispered on his way out that he needed to take care of his mom. His mom lives in Montpelier, Vermont. <laughs> no, Brian. Mm. His mom yeah, died 20 years ago. But... <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's a Western horror. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's just... Uh, that's just like like does that make Admiral Nelson collectors items now or do they have to go on and probably just pay a licensing fee from now on because somehow they own the idea of pirates who drink rum Is well this... apparently what they got them on was that uh, uh, Admiral Nelson is so unlike on their bottle was so unlike the real Admiral Nelson that they were they made the successful argument that the the, the Admiral Nelson character, was too similar to their Captain Morgan, their fictionalized Captain Morgan character, and not enough like the real Admiral Nelson. Uh, wow, that's a weird way to, cause like, uh, cause like, I mean, cause like, With the real Doctor Vice... Thunder, Mister Pib Pepper, PhD. Well, both of them were both of them were were real people. Again, 
the character that's portrayed on this show is a, a, a portrayal of the real Captain Henry James Morgan, the privateer. Not anything to do with properties owned by Diageo Incorporated, a fine <laughs> beverage retailer. <laughs> We're next. We, we get sued next. We show up in a court with sock puppets, and they're like, the fuck you doing? <laughs> Get, get the fuck out of here. We would like to open our defense with a sea shanty off. We brought our own officiator, Mike TV. Mike TV, thank you for coming. <laughs> Apparently, the real Vice Admiral Horatio Nelson had gray hair, two eyes, and lost his right arm in battle. Two eyes? Oh. That was, that's a, hey, fuck you, he, he had armless. two eyes. Well, no, because he has, because uh, he's got uh, an eye patch in... In their see, they their should have they should have gone with the MythBusters defense and say like, look, uh, eye patches were used so you could see below decks. Everyone had two eyes with an eye patch. Uh, well, yeah. Well, apparently their point was, I mean, look at that dandy, Jesus. Look, oh he, yeah, this guy's got beautiful chestnut hair. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> both of his arms and a very suave Man, eye patch. I bet he knows all the capitals. I, I love I love the idea that that uh, Diageo Incorporated's argument was two arms, no sails, motherfucker. If he's the real Admiral Nelson, then he he's, he's the one arm bandit. And that's it. Ah, <laughs> uh, so so do you think that that will affect American sales, or what do you think? Like like like, is this a collector's item now? I mean, they'd certainly. You, if you have a legal precedent in one country, I don't know whether or not they've had other similar cases thrown out in America, but uh, it, it's certainly something worth looking into if they haven't, because you'd want to press for everything that you have. If, I mean, it, it's not like just a few miles south that they feel like it's less of a ripoff. The thing that I'm I'm curious about is that it says that Admiral Nelson's only been around for six years. That can't be right, right? I feel like I remember Admiral Nelson being around when I was in high school. No, uh, I have no memory of it before seeing it on on. The, and in fact, I think it was like three years ago that somebody brought it to like a nerdtacular, like, "Holy shit, look at this! It's budget Captain Morgan. It's Admiral Nelson." Oh, huh. really? Wow. So maybe uh, people were saying that it, that I, I might just be Mandela affecting rum. Uh, that that I I had always thought that it was like it always rung me as funny that there was a Mr. Pibb to Captain Morgan. Uh, by the way, I am in love with the fact that there's a socially appropriate phrase that means the same thing as I remembered wrong, but we get to say, oh well, the Mandela effect. What can you do? Am I right? <laughs> like like it allows every. It's the perfect. Uh, dance of the veils where it's like look uh you know i'm gonna pretend yeah. that i'm not saying i misremembered and I'm, yeah, I, I'm an unreliable blowhard but i've also heard a podcast <laughs> like... <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh no jc calhoun says that he did send me a tweet that archive.org has it being around at least from 2002 huh. so what? Was, maybe it's six years in canada so maybe yeah maybe oh, the person yeah. who wrote the wrote the article just didn't vet it you know. Oh, no, I mean, no, this is uh, 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 all the hallmarks. It's the New York Post reading another news story and then rewriting yeah. the news story based on the other news story and just saying, oh, like, it, it's only been around for six years because it might have been around for six years in Canada. Uh, yeah, uh, Sailor Jerry. No, but, but, no, but Sailor Jerry, people keep saying, oh, Sailor Jerry, Sailor Jerry. Like, that, that's not the point. The yeah. idea that there are multiple, like, uh, uh, Rums that that play around with the like nautical theme is not a shock. Yeah, yeah. It's like, but Sailor Jerry's thing is the hula lady, right? Like, like yeah. I, yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't remember. I just, yeah, but yeah, it's just that it, it is, it is funny. That I mean, I guess it makes sense. It's rum for Christ's sakes. It's like, if you know, you think you automatically think pirates. You know, like if it's if it's not if you don't have some sort of the, some sort of nautical anything, then you're kind of screwed, right? Yeah. I actually don't know where like, the post uh, has gotten the six year thing from. Uh, the Globe, the Globe and Mail says that it has been sold in Canada since two thousand and three. Oh damn! Hmm. Busted. Uh, oh uh, well, then it's just the post being the post <laughs> and not being. Responsible. Are you accusing the post of having inferior journalism? Uh, uh, hey. Yeah, man. No, so I, uh, so so I'm taking this that you think uh, that it's not just your Admiral Nelson bias that you think this is bullshit. Well, it's. Um, I actually think they could make a credible case that the design of Admiral Nelson was intentionally made to 
Uh, because it doesn't matter if there was a Nelson. It doesn't matter. They're not saying nobody can have a pirate-themed rum. What they're saying is, is Admiral Nelson is intentionally designed using the same colors, similar posture, uh, and same themes to confuse uh, viewer uh, And going out buyers. of the way to be historically inaccurate to be more similar to another product. Yeah, which which is by why like okay, the history part is what bothers me because like you're telling me that they would be off the hook if it was uh uh Grand Admiral Thrawn's uh spiced rum or, or some <laughs> fictional oh, oh, yeah, property. Yeah, or, or yeah, I guess even if if Ad- Admiral Nelson actually looked exactly like Captain Morgan like what could he like Oh, yeah. well, in that case, yeah, like, yeah, I just happen to look exactly like Captain Morgan, like, like, and I'm a real person. So, like, like, you know. like, as if that would have suddenly made it okay if historically yeah. the guy yeah. did it. Yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. know. Like, like at that point, just find anyone who looks like the character Captain Morgan. Say he owned a boat, and t- tell everyone his name was Captain. Okay, but but like. To be fair, whether or not it's legally actionable, put those side by sides up. There's no question that they designed the. Oh yeah, no, <laughs> no yes, you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Morgan, right. Oh yeah, no. I mean, they added a beard and and uh, they deviated significant from the from the historical record. There's no doubt about that. But I don't understand why the historical record would matter at all. Also, uh, for the I'll, record, I'll, uh, uh, I think it was Haven Hill that owns uh, Admiral Nelson said that uh, their argument was, well, we didn't put his foot on a barrel. <laughs> that's true. That's, that's true. a good, distinctive good part of, of Captain Morgan, though. That is. That, I mean, that's, that, was, have entire that was a half-decade yeah. uh, campaign. Did I ever tell you about the time that I went into a liquor store and encountered Captain Morgan? They had a Captain Morgan? Uh, the, so, so liquor companies and beer companies will, you know, there's so many things they can't do that that they'll try whatever they can. And one of the things they can do is pay some uh, 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 community theater reject <laughs> to walk around dressed burn. up as Captain Morgan. Sick burn. <laughs> and uh, and uh, well, it, 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 it's the same reason why at bars, like shot girls exist, right? Whenever correct. there's like a new kind of shot and you'll have you know a, a you know a bunch of i'm gonna make disparaging comments about the women who are shot girls whatever pretty young ladies who are walking around giving you a free shot because they literally can't like there's so many restrictions on where they can advertise and, and another one is like what what brian's saying that that captain morgan just shows up at your liquor store yeah in yeah. fact i'm wondering if there's a photo of it that still exists somewhere uh i want to say it was spring of 2009 Jeez. Uh, and, and in fact, I wouldn't have been using any. It was before Twitter had its own photo service, before Instagram existed. Um, uh, it would have been. Shoot, man. It, 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 yeah, there, there's there's anyway, I have a photo of me and a uh, liquor store, Captain Morgan, raising our legs uh, in the ad campaign. Um, I wish this is, this is long before we ever did. Uh, uh, our bit. Like, yeah. It, right. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, there's that. So when are we going to see that? When are we going to see the uh, the uh, Captain Jack Sparrow and Captain Morgan team up? You know, like when's that movie going to be happening? I'm going to be pretty excited for that one. Uh, sorry, Agent Victor 2204. The chat goes, "He's your president too." <laughs> uh, hey, so before we go into uh, around the horn here. Um, uh, Justin, between you and me and Mike TV, we got a lot going on. Can we do like future project roadmap roundup? Can we can we talk about all this, the 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 like we're all, we're all winding up, getting ready, getting ready, getting ready. Uh, yeah, I mean, you guys, you guys go ahead. Uh, okay. Uh, Scam School is a TV show, two pilots, uh, edited Saturday, June twenty fourth, eight a.m. East Coast. Yes, 5 a.m. West Coast. Uh, set your DVRs. And one thing we haven't mentioned is not only set your DVRs, but also also watch your DVRs because the, uh, Nielsen doesn't track the recordings. It tracks the watchings of it. So, yes, set your DVR. Mm. Also bother to play it. Yeah, if you can watch it on Saturday, that's the best because they delineate between, I think, watching in the first three days and then the yeah, first seven days. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 72-hour delays, I think, the number that it does. Yeah. Uh, is there a way, do you, is there sorry, a way you can watch online that, that that actually counts? Yeah, yeah. There's a number of ways. I thought you could do it on Sling TV. I was wrong. You can it's buy one of the Sling a, packages. Uh, no, right? I checked, and Sling TV doesn't have it on any of them. Oh, uh, I was totally mistaken about that. Um, the uh, PlayStation View has a free five day trial, 
So you can watch it legitimately on PlayStation View. Uh, sign up right away. Si uh, set set the DVR, record it, mm -hmm. and then watch it, and then and cancel. Oh, and if you'd like, make sure to use privacy.com/rogue, and you could do a one-time burner so that after the trial ends, you don't actually get dinged for a subscription because you can set it to like a ten dollar limit on the card or whatever. Um, <clears throat> PlayStation View, and then uh, uh, I guess they have like a Go app, Science Channel Go. So if you if have you a cable, you could watch it later on VOD. Yeah, but but in general, I mean, they, you know, I'm sure I'm sure they'll want to see, you know, and if you know anyone that in particular would want to watch or that you think should watch, then reach out to them. Uh, and here's the other thing. Uh, of course, watch it, watch it, watch it. And while you're watching it, any and everywhere that you can or cannot watch it, make sure that you are tweeting about it. Make sure that you are using the appropriate hashtags. Uh, try to make as big a noise as possible, or as Mike TV said, uh, yeah, uh, days ago, like go go to the most archaic form that they like look for on their website, the like the seven menus in feedback thing, because that actually does go to people. Like like they will. Somebody's will job is to is to check the mail that, on yeah, that every day. That certainly will, and they, they like they'll be looking for any kind of positive any positive feedback they can get. And so if you and so if people were just a flood, even one channel be like oh my god you know like like that that will find its way to the to decision makers certainly what about facebook facebook.com slash science channel oh, which is a verified oh, oh. thing hmm. there you go yeah uh, hey by the way uh i guess know? science channel's number one show is outrageous acts of science nice uh which i don't think i'm violating anything by saying that jason and i recorded a thing we're going to be on uh, outrageous acts of science doing some stuff from Modern Rogue on there. Cool. Um, oh, that's amazing. Yeah. Do you know what episode yet? I don't know. Uh, we, you shot that very recently, like two yeah, very... two months. But they got a new. I mean, but also it's it's a mm -hmm. clip based show, right? So so it, the turnaround time. I mean, what do you know about putting together I... a clip based show? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, would, I would imagine. <laughs> Update: We finally sent them something. Yay! Yay! <laughs> Um, yeah, I, 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 I don't know. I, I got to tell you, there's something that I deeply, deeply adore about how punk rock this whole scenario is. And I would love it if Outrageous Acts of Science and Scam School got married and dominated the Science Channel forever. That would be amazing. But we'll uh, see. Absolutely. So uh, this Saturday, this Saturday, this Saturday, uh, 8 a.m. East Coast, 5 a.m. West Coast. Be there and talk about it. And then... uh. Brian, are we talking about the other thing that you have coming up around the bend? Or? Yeah, I, I, yeah, I guess can can we? I guess let's hint at it. Um, Keep uh, an eye out Monday. Yeah, I think. I, well, I think we were aiming for Monday, but but Justin, uh, uh, we we talked like I I uh, hey man, forgive me if I'm airing laundry or whatever. Uh, like the last thing I want to do, fuck, I, we're gonna launch a Patreon for <laughs> Modern Rogue. Hang in there. Okay. Um, uh, very soon. Very soon. Brand but, is on vacation this weekend. Right. We don't know when. We don't know when. But the last thing I want to do is launch it at the exact same time as Action News and screw it all up. Uh, so and, we're trying to get ahead of it. Yeah. But uh, uh, so so I'm trying to get ahead of it. But I'm afraid by getting ahead of it, I'm screwing up your gig. Like like what what is your optimal scenario for launching Action News and how can we all support it? <laughs> well, I mean. Action News is launching on June 30th, as has been the plan uh, for, 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 for months and months. We, we wanted to launch on the first day of uh, uh, Nerdtacular. So, uh, you know, that's that's that. And we'll talk about it, you know, next week and, and uh, obviously for the next month. So you guys will be hearing quite a bit about it. But uh, as far as its relation to the Patreon, uh, I mean, you know, that's 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 your guys's call, man. <laughs> We'll get on the contender mailing list, right? Can you still do that at the contender.us? Uh, uh, sure. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. get on the mailing get list the mailing and find out right when it goes live and give them as much money as it takes to get that thing. What and about you, some. Mike? Uh, what, what's the number one thing you got to promote? Um, well, you know, I've, I've, I'm putting out three albums this this year because. Oh, uh, I, thought, I swear to God, I thought you were about to say this month. Like that's oh, yeah, how no, that's yeah. how prolific <laughs> out, you are. I'm putting out three albums a month from here on out. No, uh, yeah. So, uh, and uh, the newest one is one that. So uh, basically, what I'm doing now is I'm 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 sort of every iteration of the album I'm kind of giving to my Patreon people, and I'm I'm also making it available to people that that can't afford to be paid. Like, it's just all of my Patreon posts are are 
are free for everybody. So, um, and just because, you know, but, uh, the, uh, so yeah, so I'm, I'm putting out right now, I've got 27 songs in the works for a new album that's going to be all kind of outtakes and B-sides and, and acoustic demos and stuff that I've recorded over the past year that didn't make it on my on my newest record. So um, and so, yeah, so there's 27 songs on that album. And then I've got another album coming out that's that's a live album. And then I've got a, and, then I, and then I've got the my you know, the, the, the get set go the, the big release, which will be at the end of the year. So, um, yeah, so it's a lot a lot of a lot of cool stuff happening. Uh, okay. And, and, uh, of course, patreon.com slash get set, set, go is the way to go. Uh, yeah, but, yeah, yeah. uh, all right, let's talk about, uh, uh, girls trip fever. Is that, is that the movie we're supporting? Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, do you want oh, to do that before that's you guys Diamond? own, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. No, let's do diamond time. As long as we're plugging stuff. Oh. Uh, Diamond Time is where you can shout out your projects. It is diamondclub.reddit.com. Again, diamondclub.reddit.com. Uh, right up there at the top, there's a sticky post. So go ahead and uh, write what you've got going on. We begin with Dr. Big Love. Hey, inhabitants of Planet, 50, Planet 55, San Cancree. I'm working on an advice column podcast. I want to hear all of your outrageous questions on love Life and science. Did I say it was weird? Send your questions, ideally as poorly recorded audio clips, to Dr. Big Love at sciencemike.com. Uh, there's a non episode at bit.ly slash D R B I G L O V E pod number one. Uh, that is Dr. Big Love pod number one. And I think it's neat if you want to hear my sensual voice. Hashtag I didn't write a page. I, what the fuck is going on with this? I don't know. Uh, meanwhile, <laughs> Vlad the Nerf Neko writes, Greetings, Diamond Club. I come to you as a brand new member of this fascinating and welcoming community. I want to cut you guys in on some fun stuff I've been up to. I have a YouTube channel. I review and modify Nerf Blasters as well as go to wars and games and film it all. I have a, a goal of hitting 5,000 subs by the end of the year. If I could reach this goal, I will buy one of the Pepe Nipple Eyes shirts from AliExpress oh. and wear it to a war. <laughs> Better yet, I'll film it and release the video exclusively to Diamond Club. Help me reach my goal and enable my poor purchasing habits by going to tinyurl.com slash vladnerfswag. And the V, the N, and the S are capitalized in vladnerfswag. Uh, and subscribe, Diamond Club Heart. Oh, hell yeah. Icebug rounds us out with hello to the members of Diamond Club. I've been part of the community since the early NSFW show days and decided uh, this was the time to cash in. The weekend is a group of my friends and I are getting together to do a 48-hour live stream called Boom Fest 2017 for the charity organization Doctors Without Borders. We will be starting the stream on Friday, 6:23 at 12 p.m. Central Time, 10 a.m. Pacific Time, and going until Sunday. Uh, June 25th at noon on Central Time. This is the second year that we are hosting a charity live stream with last year's event, earning 1000 for Child's Play. We'd appreciate uh, it very much if at least some of the Diamond Club would join us by watching the stream, hanging out in the chat, and of course, donating if you're able. Uh, you can see the schedule of games that we are playing as well as view the stream and donate at tinyurl.com slash boomfest17. Thank you and D-I-A-F. Yeah. Now let's dive in to the minute we've all been waiting for, the Movie Draft Minute. Welcome to Movie Draft Minute presented by CosmicRadio.tv for the week of June 19th, 2017. I'm your host, Roberto Viegas. It's now or never. I'm not going to kid you. This is as dangerous as it gets. If you die in this dream, it's for real. Let's go check the scoreboard. Team Cord Killers is in 6th place with $107.8 million. Team Scotch Bros is in 5th place as Cars 3, bringing in $53.6 million, bringing their total $268 million. Team Big Atoll is in 4th place. Rough Night bringing in $80 million, bringing their total $280.4 million. Team Frog Pants is in 3rd place, $242 million. Team Nitec is in 2nd place with $525.5 million. And in 1st place with $602.3 million. It's Team DTNS. And that is your Movie Drive Minute for the week of June 19th, 2017. All right. Now, Brian. Yeah. If Atomic Blonde makes literally no money mm. and Girls Trip... <laughs> It's a once-in-a-generation comedy classic 
that makes a hundred and seventy five million dollars. Mm. We got a shot. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's kind of what it boils down to. But meanwhile, you know who my new uh, dark horse candidate pick is, is Team Big and Tall, I think, has a chance. Uh, right now, they have the number one movie with the boss baby. Uh, rough night pulled in 20 bucks in a taco. Spider-Man Homecoming, I think, could be a $250 million movie. War for Planet of the Apes could be another 150 and that could put them in first place. Yeah, I think the problem is that they open around the same time, right? Yeah, and plus uh, one is a uh, war is a is going to be rated R. Um, I don't know. Even as I'm saying it, it's not seeming very likely. So I, I, yeah, let's. Uh, um, no, with DTNS at at six hundred and two, there's no way because even in the scenario I just described, uh, they would still they would still lose. So never mind. Everyone screwed. Tom dominated everything. Congratulations, Tom. <laughs> So the Amazing <laughs> Spider-Man Two, which was fairly reviled by critics and audiences alike, brought in two hundred million. The first uh, in that series, the Amazing Spider-Man, brought in two hundred and sixty-two million. So you would guess that Spider-Man, with the Marvel stink, but coming after those two movies with diminishing returns so closely. Would probably well. What what did Iron Man three do? I bet it'll do close to Iron Man is, three. Is is so 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 this is part of the MCU, right? So it's part of the Marvel, Marvel universe, but but it's not. But 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 from here on out, after this, he's he's not part of the Marvel universe. Sony's hanging on to him. Is that no, how it works? well that even that's controversial. But uh, uh, real quick, Iron Man three brought okay. in four hundred million dollars. So it is it yeah, is very much hoping that it is going to do Spider Man three num or sorry Iron Man three numbers. Uh, so to your point, Mike, yes, Sony initially was, was like, like uh, was like, hey, uh, uh, yeah, you know, Venom's going to be its own thing, and we're doing all these other things, and like, yeah, well, who knows whether Spider Man will be back in the MCU. But two things happened over the last week. Number one, all of the commercials for Spider-Man Homecoming now begin with Iron Man saying underoos and him landing on yeah. the, uh, uh, the, the, uh, from the, the airport scene of right. Civil War, firmly tying it into yeah, the yeah, Marvel yeah, that's Cinematic where, that's where I was... Universe. Uh, and Amy, uh, I forget his name, uh, Pascal, who is the... Uh, executive who brokered that deal uh, said publicly as part of the press tour, oh, yeah, no, everything will be in the MCU uh, going okay. forward. Uh, yeah, right, well, yeah we, we we love the MCU. We want to be part of the MCU. And uh, yeah. she's doing uh, one of those clips with Kevin Feige from Marvel, and there's, like, a great little Hello Darkness, my old friend uh, clip of him, like, looking at her like, wait, really? <laughs> that, <laughs> that's, cool. that's happening? That's not what we were talking about behind closed doors. Okay. Man, I, I, I think guess, uh, we're all one happy family. If that's the case, man, the thing is, is that like, I mean, that's, uh, I mean, I, I know, I can tell you as a, as a huge Marvel fan, growing up a huge Marvel fan and a huge Spider-Man fan, if I know that, that it's going to be shepherded by, by Marvel and not by Sony, and it, and it's going to work within the, the integrated story, like I, 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 there's a good chance I'll go see it three or four times. You know, like like I, I saw I saw I saw Guardians of the Galaxy two, three times. So yeah, so the thing is like so there's a good chance if it's a good movie, it's a good movie. I'll go. See, I'll, well, and I, and I guess that's and I don't go the real see movies question. in the theater at all. You know, what, what's funny is that's the part of this that I had never even paused to consider whether or not that would be possible. I actually never. Even now, I don't think it'll be a great movie. I think yeah, yeah, it will. Yeah. And that's, and that's I think it will have that's... great properties and a couple of great moments. But everything I'm seeing, I'm like, hey, I'm sure it'll be fun. Yeah, yeah you know, like... I'm, I'm kind of, I'm kind of with you. I, I really, really hope for the best because I love Spider Man and like he's easily, and all these other heroes that are like have weak ass villains. He's the Marvel property that has the best villains, right? Yeah, like he's, yeah, he's yeah. got great iconic amazing super fun villains and you have totally wasted him and squandered him uh you know except for the first two raimi movies which to be fair spider-man 2 holds up but it's like those movies get the the, the curve of like we were all just very excited that superhero yeah, yeah. movies were watchable and 
uh, you know, back back in that era. I, I don't know. I actually watched uh, Spider-Man 1 and Spider-Man 2 just uh, two weeks ago with the kids. And again, everything is, you know, when you watch it with your kids, it goes through a different lens. But uh, but I thought they, they held up surprisingly well. And uh, and I, 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 I like them both. And, and again, two, I think, without a doubt, uh, you know, absolutely holds up. Uh, the, the first one, I don't know. Uh, you know, yeah, and, for, and, me, for me, the William Defoe. Well, I mean, just like the, the, I'm the bad guy, kind of like <laughs> that kind Sam Raiminess. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That that for that, me, the really, close up really of the crazy. reaction shot of like, oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But but I mean but 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 all of the all of the Spider Man backstory stuff and like like that was fine and it was and it was fun to like finally see it. All. I'm like, yes, it's on the screen. Um, it's just and it's just sad that they that that people just kept remaking that movie over you, and over and over. You know again. what? Uh, here here's a moment that I rarely hear people harken back to when it comes to the Spider Man movies. And to put it in context, like you have to understand that in 2002 or whenever it was um, that that it came out. We had never, ever seen a Spider-Man movie in which he moved like Spider-Man from the comic Amen. book. Like, like Amen. before uh, uh, the, the, you know, C, uh, CGI, it simply was not possible. We got, we got Kung Fu Spider-Man. We got, you know, yeah. giant robot Spider-Man. We got, we, we got that. Do you remember the 1970s one where it's like, they're clearly lifting him on a rope and he's just, he's just moving like crazy climber yeah, on the yeah, side yeah, of a building. Yeah. Um, <laughs> like that was an extraordinary feat for its time. Yeah. Oh Yeah. No, I I I uh, I've loved Spider Man. I, I like the first of the reboots, the the Amazing Spider Man. I thought it was pretty good. Uh, the second one I still haven't seen because I heard it was just so garbage. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah, that's yeah. I I, I didn't even see the first one. I, like like I was yeah. I've just been you know like which is sad because he's he is such a such for me like is such a. Uh, uh, you know, I mean, he, you know, he was my guy. He was my guy. Like I, 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 I was collecting six Spider-Man books at the same time as a kid, like, you know, from from like 11 or 12 until, you know, into, into my late 20s, you know. Man, so. Uh, so it's so uh, it's such an odd feeling because as a kid, um, like my number one superhero was Iron Man. When I was in eighth grade, I got chicken pox mm. and uh, and mom just went to the corner store and bought a bunch of comic books. And Iron Man is the one that really took me because it was just a guy who had a cool gizmo and gave him powers and so on. Um, uh, it was the shock and delight of a lifetime that Iron Man ended up spearheading, you know, this giant experiment of the MCU and made the whole world fall in love with the character. Um, my number two and three favorites were Fantastic Four and Hulk, and mm. neither of them have ever gotten anywhere close to the level of any of, of the top tier MCU franchisers. Which is sad because, uh, you know, again, Sony owns the Fanta, and they keep putting pumping out to hang on to the rights. They keep pumping out these just terrible, no, terrible Fox, movies. Fox, for... Fox owns uh, Fox owns Fantastic Four, but I they thought, wait, keep doing I thought... the same. No, Sony owns Spider Man. Fox owns. I thought uh, oh, no, huh. Fox has Fantastic Four, and also um, Fox has uh, the the X mutants Man. and uh, Deadpool. Yeah, I know. I know. I mean, that's that's that, that's it's. That, I wonder, huh? That's that seems weird that, that they would that they would treat the, the, the X Men. They would treat the X Men with with such, you know, uh, at least some some fidelity yeah. to the story, and then and then the Fantastic Four just like. But I I, th I thought it was I don't know now no, yeah, I don't, I don't. it is it is Fox uh, it's garbage oh, they're crazy. not really good at uh, those movies and uh, uh, Fantastic Four is the best and they've always been the worst so that yeah, sucks yeah 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 yeah, yeah. It's, it's so sad because because there it would be it would be a lot of fun to see the Fantastic Four in the event it, you know in the world with the Avengers just because you've got the Reed Richards and and uh, and Tony Stark relate like, like you know like like oh, they're yeah. anyway. Yeah, just it would have been awesome. Whatever. Screw well, and, and plus also always like um I mean uh Captain America did the impossible. It took the most cartoonish red, white and blue uh walking flag character and made it uh you know gritty and believable in an, an important and meaningful way. That is what I had always wanted for the Fantastic Four is a period piece set in at the height of the Cold War, 1960s cosmic rays, you know, yeah, pipes, yeah. pipes, and and uh, and just Robert Young, uh, dappled temples and all. You know, it's like, uh, um, oh, totally. 
And you know, by the way, uh, this uh, came up when I was looking for who owned the rights to the Fantastic Four. There was a rumor uh, back in uh, a couple years ago that uh, Marvel owned the rights to Hellfire Club and Legion, which they gave the, the rights to Fox to make television shows out of. There's yeah. a Hellfire Club uh, show coming up next fall on the Fox Network. Uh, and the rumor was that part of that deal was mm -hmm. similar deal to uh, oh, okay, Hellfire got canned. Sorry, uh, but Legion obviously is now a hit. Uh, that part of that deal was to bring the characters into the MCU in a similar kind of shared thing awesome. that, uh, that they have with Sony for Spider-Man. Dude, Legion was so good. Have you seen it yet, Mike? Yeah, I have. So, so the thing is, like, so I, I was, I was holding off. You turned me on to that first episode, and it rocked my world. Oh, that's right. We and watched then, the whole thing. Yeah, you were my third yeah. viewing of the pilot episode of Legion. Yeah. I was going to show you just a bit, and then we just sat through the whole yeah, thing. Yeah, watched the whole thing, and it was fucking mind blowing. And so, and then I was holding off because Katie was like, was like, all right, well, let's watch it together. And then one week went by, and three weeks went by. So I've, so I've just now begun, begun to watch it. Like, like I've just been buying individual episodes. So. So, you know, so I'm, you know, so I'm if you're on. wondering where your uh, your twitch.tv subscription money is going, uh, yeah, yeah. congratulate <laughs> Fox. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, all right. Look, man, man, I guess it's time to wrap up. We went long. So, uh, yeah. I, uh, uh, we learned uh, we learned that Captain Morgan is the superior shanty uh, capital themed songster. Yeah, that's true. Uh, uh, we we learned that uh, girl, wait, yeah, girls trip will be a uh, hundred and seventy five million dollar uh, landmark comedy. We learned that uh, game show fails happened before the show, so I shouldn't reference them at the beginning. Of we have the whole bit with the captain and the admiral. <laughs> we learned that DJs do work. <laughs> we learned that if you want to hear what we're talking about, subscribe at patreon.com slash night attack. I love you guys. <laughs> Die to fire. <laughs> My TV is going to be a nerdacular. Uh, uh, see you next Tuesday. That I want to drink a warm glass of Drano. Night attack. 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 I love you. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>